hello friends so this is an interesting question and this question is asked to me too many times recently i was talking to my kids uh, explaining them algebra and this question was again asked how maths relates to real world although we do many things in real world which involves maths which involves arithmetic sometimes algebra and there are many engineering marvels which which was not at all possible if we do not know the basic theories of calculus the basic algebraic equations and uh, how these equations play a big role in understanding a system design or in understanding the nature in general so going forward in domain 3 we will be having some interesting topics which is heavily dependent on mathematical models and mathematical constructs so when we will be looking into security models like the security model of bell lapidula or biba model or clark wilson model or lipner model so these models there are two ways of understanding these model one way is just to understand what is the outcome of these models like when we are thinking of bell lapidula model so what is what is in the end this model is trying to achieve and what are the outcome of these models on a on an understanding of a higher abstraction this is one way of understanding these security models and this is uh, this is something which works for cissp exam in cissp exam you don't have to go into details in an, in understanding the mathematical foundation of uh, these security models but understanding the mathematical foundation is very interesting most of the time we do not go into mathematical foundations because it's too complex it's too um, it's written in a very boring way it's written in a way which is presented uh, to academic circle in term, in terms of research papers so i happen to uh, download and uh, uh, read some of the research papers uh, one of the paper which is um, March 1976 research paper which is I am having in my hand. Let me show you. So this is the research paper. It's a it's quite a big uh, big paper. It's a it's 137 pages I think, including appendix and all. So this talks about security. Uh, sorry, secure computer system, unified exposition, and multi-tax interpretation. It was written by Bell Lapidula. and it talks about the the detailed discussion on the mathematical models he used in arriving at a secure secure system model which can be used uh, in designing secure computer systems basically now if we are if you are interested in understanding those thing it's going to take time and if you don't have too much time and you are you have planned your cssp exams in near future and you just want to understand a topic to the depth so that you can pass the exam i won't recommend you to go into the detailed analysis of these research paper nevertheless i will go into details and uh, if you uh, if you are if you are willing you can watch those de those uh, details it will be interesting and uh, yeah it will be exciting i will make it interesting i think uh, to my best of my ab ability <coughs> now before i jump into those mathematical models and mathematical constructs i would uh, like to give you a brief answer to the real question which was asked what is the relevance of mathematics and mathematical model in our day to day life if you look carefully you will see that this whole world which we see including this uh, this whole universe and this planet earth and uh, the world we perceive as a human being this world is governed using some laws right there are certain laws which are acting on us acting on the nature acting on the planet and we are all subjected to these laws so this is one set of laws we are humans and we interpret life we live in a social structure so we also create some laws so there are two broad categories of laws natural laws and man made laws so these laws exist as part of the ecology where we exist 
Now, I will discuss natural laws, then I will come to the mathematics part of it. Briefly, when it comes to, um, to man-made laws, so man-made laws are made in order to best use the resources which is presented to human being and to resolve conflict between, between any, um, any two human being or any two community which exist on this planet. So, man-made laws, if they comply to or if they kind of align with the natural laws, it sustains, right? And if it do not align with natural laws, it will bring disaster. It may bring disaster immediately or it may bring disaster after some time. It depends on the nature of law we are trying to get rid of or we are trying to break. For example, there is a natural law, natural law of gravity. Right? This law of gravity we discovered and we came to know that this law is founded on some key principles of material interaction and this material interaction happens between any two matter which has got some mass. So the matter has got a property mass and with this property mass a gravitational field is generated and the property of gravitational field is in such a way that it attracts another matter. So this is the theory of gravity. So we have got gravitational force and then we have got objects which are affected with this gravitational force. So this is a law and we act accordingly. If we don't, we can't, um, we can't design a system which uh, in turn violates the law of gravity, right? You can't go to a 10th story building and jump and uh, you, you, if you are having this intention that I will prove that the theory of gravity is wrong by jumping from a high rise building, you won't change the law but you will break yourself against the law. That's what I meant by uh, that if we design a system or if we design a law, man-made law, which is not aligned with natural laws, then it will bring a disaster. So these are man-made laws. When it comes to natural laws, we will, uh, we will see if we, if we go in details into natural laws that these natural laws are based on certain natural principles. So principles are the underlying truth which exist in nature, right? One of the principles I explained is the principle of material interaction. So this principle says that if there are two matter, they have mass then this property of mass will enable these matters to attract each other. There is a similar property of electric associated with electric charges, which says that if there are two electric charges, they are going to put some force on each other. If they are of opposite polarity, they will attract. If they are of same polarity, they will repel each other. So this is another principle. So there is a principle of material interaction and this principle is experienced by everyone and we say that there is a law of gravitation which is which arises this law we come to know because there is a principle of material interaction right so there is a principle and there is a law so every natural law is governed by certain principles at the next stage if you further contemplate on those natural principles you'll see that these natural principles are not random they don't have the random willpower to act in a random way. They are all very fine-tuned and they are all following a defined logic. So natural laws follow certain natural principles and these principles follow certain underlying logic, right? How we come to know these logic? How we can best understand these logic? So there are tools to understand these uh, underlying logic which governs a principle and these principles are experienced by human being and we call them natural laws. To understand these natural principles, we use certain tools and one of the tools is mathematics. And this tool gives an ability for human beings to draw concepts, to draw mental pictures in understanding the underlying logic. So, 
if you want to have um, uh, a quick answer of how mathematics relates to real world, you can think in a way which I explained that um, our world, the real world, where we want to see the relevance of mathematics, we should know that this world is governed with some laws. It could be natural laws and man-made laws. Since we are talking mathematics, let's focus on natural laws and we will see that the natural laws are not, they do not exist in vacuum. There are certain underlying principles which act on certain tangible things we see around. And these principles give rise to a phenomena which we experience in terms of certain laws, right? Now, these principles again depend on certain logic and these logic, logic are, uh, are acting in a way which gives rise to certain principles, right? Like the principle of material interaction, I said, the principle of electric field and electrostatic charges. So, these principles, if we look carefully, examine and apply scientific methods, we'll know that these principles follow certain defined logic. And these and exploration of these logics, logic is done using mathematical models, using mathematical tool. On a very, very high level, uh, let me explain you with an example that uh, again, the, the concept of gravity, one of my favorite concept. So when we, when we see sun, moon and planets and everything, and we want to know that how these things are floating in this cosmos, in this universe, there are different theories. So, there were ancient Plato and Aristotle, they came up with certain theories. And then we have uh, modern day uh, classical mechanics, which explains the, these movements, these movements and uh, um, the relationship between any two planetary object was uh, calculated, right? And we came to know that this relationship follows a defined formula, right? And this formula is such a way that the force between two planets will be proportional to its mass and will be a square inversely proportional to, inverse square proportional to its distance between them, right? So this is the mathematical formula. And all the planets follow these, these, uh, um, this mathematical formula, right? Now you can see the hierarchy. So you have got the law of gravity. The law of gravity is acted by the principle of material interaction. And then when we examine this principle, we know that this gravitational force, which we see is defined using uh, a fine tuned mathematical equation. And when we, when we put this mathematical equation into further experimentation, we do uh, experimentation with different, different objects. Then we come to know that there is a constant which is, uh, which is a part of the equation is called the universal gravitational constant. Then we come to know this formula F equals to G times the masses and then divide, divided by the square of the distance between them. This is how math, math relates to our general life. The other very uh, simple example could be the number system. So if I ask you where is 3, where is 4 and 5, we don't know. We just came up with these symbols to make sense of the discrete nature of objects which we see around us. So we have one mango. So we have mango, then we have more mango, then we have more mango. So we, we came up with number system that if we have mango, we say that it's one. If we have one more, then it becomes two and three and so on. So we define this number system. So this is, um, this is one way of developing an idea um, or uh, trying to develop a concept or a, or a construct to understand the discrete mathematics, right? Now with this discrete mathematics, when we further, uh, you know, observe and do more scientific uh, uh, advancement, then you associate numbers with some units and with these units, we, we give meaning to the numbers. So three becomes three meter or three kilo, then we come to know that, okay, this is length and this is mass. And then we come to certain derived quantities like velocity or acceleration or force, which, which, is, uh, which is calculated using these basic things. And then with this calculation of force, then we define 
certain parameters and uh, you know in gradual advance advancement we have uh, cars and we have aeroplanes we have rockets we have satellites so all these things are made possible by discovering the laws of nature the underlying principles and how these principles are operating using defined logic the relationship between uh, different parameters in a logic and the only possible tool which we can have to quantify these ideas these principles and these laws is mathematics that's how mathematics is related to the real world In next videos, we will be going into some more details into how bell lapidula model is uh, is uh, is defined or designed using the concept of discrete mathematics. We have got sets, relations, and functions, and what is um, uh, what is the relationship which which define which is defined in a bell lapidula model, and uh, yeah, so there are more interesting things coming up. Thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you again and best of luck for ECSSB exams.